Hey, Jeff. Hi, Bill. How are you? All right. That's good. Excuse me. I'll change my background too, I think. There we go. I joined you in the blur. Mm -hmm. Have you done your mock hearing? Uh, I have indeed. Huh? I uh, have indeed. Oh, you uh, have indeed. Yeah, we just finished ours. It was interesting. It was it was really useful. I'm I'm glad we did it. Um, more than the one we did earlier. You know, it was just um, just a a lot of good information, thanks to our learned council suggestions. I found it helpful. I, I thought each of no, them. No, I really did. Each who, of them, yeah, I think, was, were very, uh, very useful. Who was the hearing examiner for you? Oh, this new member of our team, uh, Pam O'Berry, who's a new attorney with uh, Sands Anderson, but she has a, a background with PCOBs, and I think she was a was she a judge at one point? Yes, yeah, she was a general district court judge. Wow, um, for some time in Chesterfield County. Yeah, yeah, she was. She she oh. presided at our at our hearing. Oh, she did. Okay, so I yeah. was impressed. Very impressed. Yes, yes, yes. Pam is a great addition to the team. Yeah, it looks like you guys are lucky to have her there at your firm, um, I think Cynthia. So. Absolutely. Hey, James. Hey, James. How you doing? Good. How you doing? How's everybody? Good. Give people a few more minutes here. Nope. Gonna go dark to take a couple. Where did you come down on the um, four choices, uh, Bill, of, of you know, for outcome, for recommendation? Well, we, we are going to talk about it during the, the during the, the meeting. Oh, okay, I, great, great, great. I, I hope we I would. would say, but the answer is guilty as sin. <laughs> well, did Hansel give you the the uh, the follow up to what really happened in the yes, real case? Yes, did. That really surprised me. Hey, Nancy. Hey. Good evening, everyone. James, in that picture you posted, was that your, your little guy in the middle? Yeah, yeah, the one uh, with the kids at the school. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, one of our one of our friends actually, um, well, one of our, our neighbor and friend uh, just gra just finished the fourth grade over there. So, what was it, yeah. Greenbrier? Yeah, you, your sons went there, right? Um, one of them did. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so they had a little uh, elementary school graduation ceremony. The <laughs> just is having theirs right now, though. My daughter. Oh, that's right. They are. Yeah, you should be there. Why aren't you there? <laughs> well, she already grad. No, I wouldn't be here over that. No, she already graduated, but uh, she has a bunch of friends that are, are graduating tonight, and it's right down at the amphitheater tonight. Oh, is that where they're doing it? I didn't realize that. One of the downtown mall, the, the pavilion, I guess the latest name of it. Tang. 
Big. Yeah, it was in Tellos for a little while, right? Been a few. Guys, been a, been a little bit of everything. Yep. Just like the stadiums. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, they're going to rename uh, Scott Stadium the um, super fan James Watson Stadium. You gotta have you gotta have millions and millions. Of no, games. no, no. We got we got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> Just your fandom is so intense that they decided to forget the money. There you go. And then they'll they'll let us all have free tickets and, and go hang out in the suite too as well. No, that's that's up to you <laughs> to, to to invite your a hundred of your closest friends. Five of them right here, right? <laughs> After our retreat. Yes, indeed. <laughs> DJ Scratch in the house. <laughs> Scratch. Boy, oh, boy. Oh. Charles wouldn't let go of that one, would he, Bellamy? That was good, no. though. <laughs> Sounds if, like the trick retreat went really well. Actually, uh, it did. It went very yeah. well. Oh, great. We have a poet among us. Uh, I, I, I kind of you wouldn't think the Marine would be the poet. Wow. <laughs> what, 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 what is the, uh, what's the saying? It's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. <laughs> a warrior in a garden. There you go. That's you right there. All right. I think it's time. I sent a text, I sent a text to Debra. Uh, I think we can uh, uh, come to order now. Okay. Uh, okay. Welcome to the uh, June meeting of the uh, uh, Civilian Oversight Board. Uh, are there any announcements? Okay, then I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I make a motion. Second. Uh, Mr. Aguilar. Member Brown. Yes. Member Carpenter. Yes. Member Fraser. Yes. Mm. Chair Mendez. Yes. Vice Chair Watson. Yes. Okay, the agenda is approved. With thanks to Hansel for pulling it together. Uh, the minutes, okay, are approved. <laughs> now we, I guess, we approve the agenda. Uh, Anyone have any comments? Uh, would like to see any changes, add any items? If not, there's. we can always make a motion. Um, I make a motion. Is there a second? Mr. Aguilar? <coughs> Member Brown? Yes. Member Carpenter? Yes. Member Fraser? Yes. Chair Mendez? Yes. Vice Chair Watson? Yes. Uh, all right. Um, the next item on our uh, agenda is uh, for us to uh, explain to the public that we uh, the board on May 28th uh, attended an all-day professional, professionally facilitated retreat. Um, this was the first time that all the members of the board had been in the same room, uh, and I was very happy that uh, we could all make it. Um, we did not talk about board business. Uh, we discussed our life histories, our families, um, our aspirations and concern. Uh, I personally found it to be extremely useful, and I think it was uh, we've achieved a much better level of trust and understanding uh, among ourselves. Anyone have any other comments? I would just echo the chair's uh, sentiment. I, w I was really pleased with how it went. I, I was happy to finally. Uh, be in the room with my uh, board colleagues. Um, that was a first for me since joining. Um, and um, I thought uh, Charles did a terrific job. I mean, he was it's something I know something about professionally, and I thought he, he, 
he, he did a masterful job of kind of getting everybody engaged uh -huh. and um, participating and just helping us get to know each other. So I, I was I was extremely um, happy with how it went. Well, yeah, I thought you know at a certain point we would get a a, a baptismal pool, you know, and <laughs> he would you know do <laughs> do it on us us, us heathens. Uh, but anyway, no, he was. Uh, I agree. Uh, it was a very wonderful experience. He was very professional, uh, and very smart. Guy. Yeah, Hansel, uh, kudos to you for finding him. I mean, I thought we would have two folks there. What's her name? I'm blocking, couldn't make it, but he did fine without her, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I thought it was really great. You know, uh, obviously, it would have been awesome if we could have had it, you know, two years ago or eight months ago. You know, I do think it's almost the type of thing that should be a once a year event, uh, particularly as get new people on board but even just purely being human right in and the last two years or so just the only time we see each other is in this environment at the end of our work day and all that other stuff so it it really humanized all of us um there's been a lot of things i've even thought about since that saturday and how they can apply to my life and um we just just have a greater understanding where everybody's coming from you know and uh um, I think the city itself needs to call that gentleman up and have them, <laughs> even different departments, right, come in and, and do those yeah. types of, uh, uh, you know, team building. Uh, so it, it was great. Agreed. And agreed. Thank you, Hansel. Any other uh, comments for now? Uh, okay, I guess. The next item is the first public comment session. Uh, Mr. Aguilar, is anyone, would anyone like to address the board? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you'd like to speak to the Police Civilian Oversight Board, please click the raise hand icon in the Zoom webinar. If you're joining us via telephone, press star nine. Each speaker will be allowed up to three minutes. Please share your place of residence when you begin. I do not see any raised hands at this time, sir. All right. Well, there will be uh, another opportunity for public comments uh, at the end of uh, the meeting. So um, the yeah, people will get a, uh, another shot. Uh, all right. Um, so the next item up is the executive director's report. And I know there's a lot in there. Uh, Director Aguilar, take it away. Thank you, sir. I'll start with the um, the order that you presented in the agenda. So for the status of complaints, let me go ahead and share the report. Okay. For the status of complaints, we, since your last meeting, there was one um, initial complaint, and in that complaint, the allegations or two allegations of an officer abusing their authority. Specifically, the complainant was alleging that that subject officer was engaged in a cover up with the ex spouse of the complainant, who's non law enforcement, in an insurance fraud case related to a, an automobile accident. Um, the complainant is a female, the race and ethnicity are unknown. You have not received any review requests since your last meeting, and there were two closure letters. One um, closure letter would make the complaint eligible for review if requested by the complainant, and the other one is not eligible because all the allegations were sustained. Uh, the allegations of the one that would be eligible for review are disturbance, unsatisfactory performance, and bias-based policing. And the complaints that were sustained uh, against the officer in the separate um, alley, uh, case were the uh, inappropriate comments uh, used against the complainant. Uh, Ms. Tagular, what, um, I'm sorry, I, I didn't follow you what the uh, 
status of the insurance fraud allegation or whatever that one was. I was a little confused. So that is an initial complaint that was just received uh, by Internal Affairs. Okay. And they're currently investigating that. There were two allegations and are two separate, was rather ongoing incident of this officer uh, trying to cover up uh, an insurance or, or involved in some insurance fraud through not representing, from what I understood from the complaint, not representing um, the the case, the uh, crash investigation correctly. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. And now that you all have your um, your city issue laptops, I'm going to begin okay. uploading rather than emailing all these complaints and closure letters directly on the SharePoint site so you can have access to them. Mr. Aguilar? Yes, sir. Uh, what, when did the time clock start on the insurance case? That one was a recently received, uh, I can, if you allow me a few moments, I can get you that information. So that one was received from what I'm seeing by the department in May of, of May 19th of this year, but it seems that the incidents, now I'm looking specifically at the uh, complaint form, uh, they appear to have taken place on October 28th of 2021. But the... Uh... Investigatory process is 75, 75 days from May 19th, correct? Correct, from, yes. <laughs> okay, the, there are no other questions regarding those statuses. Um, the next item on the um, executive reports was the hearing. Um, Chair Mendes, is there any particular aspect of the hearing that you wanted me to discuss to make sure I address everything? I think we can we can wait uh, until we talk about the training and uh, have the debrief. Um, I think the only um, issue before us tonight would probably be uh, if we confirm uh, a schedule. Okay. And, and just, I guess, a quick update on that. I just received notice this week. I know a lot of members, particularly Ms. Carpenter, remember Carpenter had expressed interest of returning in person. Uh, they were still operating mostly um, remotely, but there uh, is a, a, a waiver so it's being allowed for the board to hold this hearing in person or in a hybrid format in city space. So uh, I submitted a um, uh, today a safety plan that's going to be reviewed by the city manager and by uh, Mayor Snook. And if it's approved, it will be, uh, you will be allowed to have this hearing in person. But all other meetings right now for the board are still going to be done remotely. I think I also I agree that it would be uh, very desirable to have a uh, an in-person meeting, an in-person hearing if that, if that were possible. Yes, so another um, update in the report uh, would be the budget to actuals. And I'll go ahead and share that just so you can see what we're looking. And this is posted on the website, again, under reports. Um, so for the budget to actuals, and I just pulled this today, we currently have available 172,000 uh, in our fiscal year ends in uh, the end of the month. So mm -hmm. it's about 50% of the budget is still available. Uh, there will be some expenses, but more in, in more than likely we will be given uh, some of the unused money back to the uh, general fund. Do you, uh, can you, can you hear me? 
Yeah, I can. Do you, uh, how do I, are you the city manager's representative or does he, does all of the, the power reside with him uh, regarding what would go, what would go back? No, so the uh, my understanding of the protocol is that any unused money that any department has, it automatically goes back to the general fund. Mm -hmm. I don't make yeah. a determination. Yeah, and also, uh, I think I can um, answer Bellamy as well. I had a a talk with the city manager who <laughs> actually called me, you know, called me in, and he made it very clear that uh, Hansel is the uh, Hansel is the final decision maker uh, on spending money for the board subject to approval by his office. That, that is basically the city manager's office, the uh, finance department. So there is, okay, so there is. So we so, need to spend some money. Oh, I'm sorry, Bellamy, I apologize. <laughs> so ultimately it's, it's a, uh, uh, the buck stops there as opposed to at Hans, is, 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 am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. Very well. And, and I'd just like to remark, I mean, there are a number of circumstances that um, made it, uh, resulted in, in our not spending the allocated funds this year. I don't think that negates the, uh, you know, the, the sort of the generosity of the gesture uh, also, uh, I was discussing with uh, Hansel, and I believe Bellamy, um, we have uh, essentially our same budget next year uh, as we have this year with a small cost of living increase. So I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, you said the same? It's the, basically the same okay. financial allocation next gotcha. year as this year with a small cost of living increase. So it's not like they're holding it against us and cutting our um, cutting our allocation. Uh, Nancy? Yeah, as um, a member of the Community Outreach Committee, um, I'd like to make a suggestion for an expenditure. Um, there was a nice uh, bicycle giveaway at the Tonsillor League. However, it seemed like um, the uh, method of being able to receive their children to receive one of those bikes wasn't quite as clear as it could have been uh and i'd like to see us as a uh you know community outreach to go ahead and um find out from the tonsil league like approximately how many children did not receive bicycles and uh you know as, as a uh, method of uh letting people know we're there helping to step in now that i i hear how much is, is left at the end of the year but step in and uh maybe uh, purchase a bunch of those bicycles and get them put together and, um, you know, have a giveaway. I mean, you know, this thing, it's a little outside of the box and, and maybe not uh, according to script, but um, I think if we're looking to uh, create some goodwill in a lot of communities that are over-policed and, um, you know, underserved, that this might be a way of, um, you know, collaborating with uh, a group of people who are doing a good thing when it comes to athletics and sports and support what they wanted to do. Because I, I know personally of at least four children that didn't register that were expecting, you know, to be able to receive uh, a bicycle and um, were severely, you know, disappointed. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, it may go nowhere. It may just, you know, slide right down the wall. But uh, I think it would be something to consider. Well, uh, my I don't know whether uh, the executive director has any any thoughts. I mean, this is a you know a new a new idea, and I think we would have to think about it. Uh, but my suggestion would be, Nancy, you know, contact the Tonsler League and find out, uh, you know, what's uh, you know what's what's involved. Do they have a waiting list? If um, I you know, so I mean, it sounds like you're, <laughs> in a sense, is volunteering to to uh, take the lead here, um, and uh, it's hard. 
it's going to be hard to, to get the money spent this month. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Give me the credit card. <laughs> yeah, Let's go. well, so anyway. Uh, yeah, Bellamy, you've got thoughts? Yes. Um, so it, it would appear that uh, from my conversations with other board members that uh, <laughs> at the very least, the three, there are three of us that had different thoughts about connecting with the community, uh, community engagement, and doing certain things that were, I guess, as Nancy put it, outside of the box. Um, and in my conversations, as of even earlier today, uh, with the city attorney's office, the uh, and and, and uh, you know, uh, Mr. Aguilar, I spoke with earlier as well. The question. Uh, Came, how does it connect how, how does it connect with the idea of oversight and um, policing in general so to put it bluntly we are outside of our thinking um, in, in in going down that road now uh, I guess there would be more clarification from uh, the, the city manager um, I was told that that you know, could be a conversation, but ultimately it seems like across the board, unless it has to do with policing or that particular oversight, they are not amenable to to those things. Did well, you say they you, are not, Mr. Oh, Brown? Ahead, Jeff. I, just was, oh, I wanted to clarify. Yeah, that's that was my understanding. I just want to make, <clears throat> make sure. So given, given this, this sort of late date um, and the attention that we need to focus on our you know, getting this hearing done. Um, what I s suggest and uh, willing to entertain alternatives would be that, you know, the community outreach committee uh, convene and put together a, a menu of outreach activities. Uh, they're linked to uh, community policing and police oversight. Uh, and then we can decide uh, with a more due degree of deliberation, uh, you know, what to fund. And so if, if someone would take responsibility to do that, uh, you know, we could get this ball rolling. On Nancy? <laughs> oh, sorry. No, no, that's fine. I mean, you know, I mean, if, if you want to connect it to community policing, we buy the bikes and they take them out to the community and give them away. You know, you see the blue. I mean, not that I'm I'm just throwing it out there as another outside the box. It's got to connect to community policing. You want another generation to perhaps come up with a different focus or lens. I'm not going to, you know, argue for it. I'm just saying that was, you know, my thinking that, uh, you know, it's a way of, you know, putting the all you know putting a continuum together between a board of oversight uh uh an agency that has you know had historic um and i'm you know i'm maybe speaking outside of my lane but historically has not uh done well by a lot of folks and um you know the next generation of kids that you know are going to be the leaders and you know they can have a, a better a better um outcome from this interaction but that's if it's too late in the fiscal year we'll 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 put it off we'll maybe do it we'll maybe do it next fiscal year Uncle. yeah i think you you may be running out the clock the, the clock may be running out on you but i would say if, if you're passionate about some of these things one potential thing i, I spoke with a board member was you may want to say write a letter to city council and say hey we're not able to use the operating budget for different reasons. We, there are this is the money going back to the general fund. We would like for you to consider these potential projects, and that might be. And I'm not saying that they're necessarily going to be allocated for that because, from what I understand, the general fund is already spent to, but they they can potentially give them more information about. Okay, these are some of the things that the board members think that these would be good projects, and they may have used that money that way. James, uh, yeah, I, I I like I like Nancy's idea. It makes a lot of sense. I was uh, when when I kind of heard how much we had left earlier, 
I called up uh, Hansel and I said, you know, there's a, so there's a nonprofit that um, called Love No Ego, which works with a lot of kids in the city and really provides uh, tremendous opportunities, uh, sets them up with role models, you know, gets people outside. And so, so I was talking to Hansel about that. It, it does look like we're a little bit late with trying to use this particular pot of money, but we're not late in general as far as the direction that we want to go in. And um, I don't know if like once that money's gone, if it's if it just stays in that oh we can't get it back kind of kind of status. But <clears throat> as you're saying, Hansel, we could we can kind of outline some groups that we we think you know could benefit. I don't like seeing, you know, kids, you know, be turned away. I think the program was great, though, with, with the bikes. Um, the way government works, I don't know if, if we could, you know, if if, the, if 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 it can be done in the next 20 some days, that'd be great. But, you know, knowing government, I'm not government. I'm not sure if, like, even with this nonprofit I'm talking about, we're going to meet with them next week. I'm just going to have lunch with the, the president of the uh, Love No Ego friend of mine too but you know i guess i should have been meeting with him six months ago right to get you know set up for uh, a 30 june the way government works unfortunately but um i think that's the kind of thing we need to be doing though you know what nancy is suggesting it's unfortunate that the bureaucracy and the way things are kind of play out don't don't allow us to just do it like that but uh but we're all learning, right? And so moving forward, that's that's probably, you know, the, definitely the direction we need to be going in. And I know for me, the kids are really the, the primary group that I think uh, we, we should be looking out for, you know? So um, I guess more to follow. Are we are we waiting to hear anymore? We said that, that it's kind of, you, Bellamy, you talked to the city manager and he said kind of goes well, to Hansel and all that. Well, I might have no. lost some of that. No, I talked to this. I talked to this, uh, the city attorney, right. uh, and that's well. I mean, earlier Hansel had, uh, I believe, it was Hansel had explained the process, or no, Bill had uh, explained the process, um, and that the city manager has the ultimate authority, and that's uh, essentially what the city attorney was saying to me uh, earlier. Uh, and this goes back to uh, you know, prior, I guess, question regarding software purchase and everything else. And uh, I don't know. It, it's not ironic that three separate uh, members have connected with three separate separate groups in the community um, in an effort to try and you know build and foster these relationships. I think the the idea that you know we can only present you know something uh, regarding policing or whatever else and call that you know building relationships is I don't know. Um, I, I think the, the constriction on that is, you know, we're we're representing the community, and you know, we're telling, you know, local government that there is, there is a disconnect there. Um, and there I, I think that there should be some more flexibility for how we go about engaging the community and building those relationships to build that trust for what we're trying to do. Uh, James, and I would say all the communities we're talking about. Are the are the folks that you know have have been uh, great most greatly impacted over the over the decades, right? And so um, I don't know. When we see money on the table, we just don't you know like to see it get swept away. But if we can still get it later on, you know, uh, and and maybe kind of plan for it and and get it at you know attain these funds at some point. Uh, that it, you know we'll have a positive result in the end, but yeah, it's I don't know. It, it has this unfortunate feeling right now, you know that yeah, yeah I, I, money's being unused. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I, I'm kind of sympathetic, but as you know, Bellamy's, you know, in, in his discussions with the city attorney, uh, I think we're going to need to get our SHIT together uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, have a real outreach committee uh, with the chairperson. Uh, that chairperson will be responsible for gathering ideas from the board uh, and, uh, you know, writing a short profile of what these ideas are 
how they tie into police oversight and what the approximate estimated costs would be. And that would have a much greater chance of succeeding, I think, than sort of this piecemeal approach. You know, it all comes down to we don't have, unfortunately, we don't have operating procedures, so we don't really have committees. So we don't, our committees don't really have any authority. But if someone does in anticipation of, you know, next fiscal year, want to take that responsibility, go ahead, call me, I'll coordinate with you. And, you know, we can, we can work this out and present it to present a list of alternatives to the board, they can read it, they can go on the agenda, and we can talk about it and then recommend them to to Hansel. So one thing I would recommend to is with the recently formed committees and any future committees you may have just make sure you have a purpose and, and that that purpose is within the scope of the board. I think last time you, you created the committees, but I'm not sure if yet you have a, a written purpose of, of what that each committee mm -hmm. is. So I think that that would be really helpful to making sure you communicate with the public and we all understand what that committee is doing. Agreed. Um, uh, oh. I think you should probably go on with your report. Okay. I see Vice Chair uh, Watson no. has his hands up. I don't know if he has. No, it's uh, it's stuck in the up position. Let me. <laughs> but I got a lot of things going through my head, but, you know, this is a big learning experience, the whole process, right? Every meeting, every week, every month, it's a lot of learning going on here. I was talking to Hansel. Sorry, I'm good. I'm not going to hold this up too long, but I'm like, man, I've been on this committee now for over two years. My time's coming to an end in about six months, I think. But I'm like, it takes you that long to figure out <laughs> what some of the possibilities are, right? And so, uh, which makes me think that 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 leaves this committee at, at risk as people. Uh, transition off of it because now you got people relearning right relearning well what's... but that yeah that's also an argument for committees having clearly defined uh missions yeah uh, well, i mean our mission with that is simple we want to know people to know who we are right yeah I mean, you sitting yeah, over there again, you live, you sit we, over here nobody's once, gonna know yeah, you exist once, yeah once we write that down <laughs> yeah. that's basically the scope of work for for the for the outreach committee and and once we have that that can serve as a guide for new members and by the way james please re-up yes please mr aguilar yes so the other uh, updates uh we were able to uh with the um the assistance of uh, member frazier and vice chair watson interview a, a good group of uh, candidates for our first cohort of summer interns uh, and we were able to offer uh, two uh, positions. One is going to be focused on uh, public outreach and public relations, and the other intern is going to be assisting with investigations and with auditing and making sure we have that in order for when the operating procedures are passed. Uh, I did want to just note that one of our interns, I did ask him, today's a soft start. He's just observing. He had the opportunity to observe one of our mock hearings, and he is in attendance. Uh, Jeremiah, but you'll get to know him in the upcoming weeks. But I appreciate uh, Member Frazier's and uh, Vice Chair Watson's uh, assistance with those interviews. If I could just uh, comment briefly, Mr. Chair. Um, first, commend Mr. Aguilar for coming up with a really good job description and pool of candidates. And I think we've got two really strong interns, and I couldn't be more pleased uh, with their resume and with their enthusiasm and with their energy. And um, it, it's going to be a huge asset to our executive director to have them this summer uh, working with him. So it's all good. In, in the agenda under my section, sir, the, the uh, other items I have are 
hearing the status of training in the mock hearings debrief uh, in the schedule. Is that or in the recruitment or hearing examiner? We're going to talk about those all together or how do you envision having that discussion? I was thinking that, um, you know, I think we probably should start by sharing our experiences and observations uh, from the mock hearings. Uh, and that will sort of guide our uh, our thoughts as, as we go forward. Um, so right now we have uh, all the members except one have gone through uh, a mock, uh, the second set of mock hearings. Is that, that correct, Constable? Yes, sir. And um, did uh, we actually uh, record the hearing today? No, and that slipped my mind, but I am going to get with the, the member and make sure that they are, we can get them an opportunity. Okay, good. All right. Uh, and what was the response uh, to the um, training uh, package? Did uh, most people make a good good start at it or finish it entirely? I know that was fairly uh, extensive. And my, I would just say, uh, gee, it was really useful to a lot of the issues uh, raised in the, in the hearing, in the training uh, schedule were right on for this particular mock hearing and as I understand it for the mock for the hearing that's coming up. So um, what I would suggest and I'm not going to take names or, or anything like that, but if anyone did not have time to, you know, finish the videos uh, or read the general orders and uh, so on, you know, please continue. Um, because all that, all those resources are very useful. And uh, again, I'll just start really quickly. My own experience, I was uh, the, the lone guinea pig at first, um, the first mock hearing. Uh, I th and uh, I thought the experience was, was very useful. Uh, going through the, you know, Hansel did an excellent job of, of recreating uh, an internal affairs report, um, which eliminated in my mind some, some very glaring problems uh, with the decision uh, that was made, uh, like, you know, using a taser without warning is, is uh, categorized as discourtesy. Uh, yeah, no. I don't think so. I think it's something uh, something more than that. Um, and so my you know my impression was uh, that yeah the the uh, uh, the finding was not consistent with the facts available. Uh, and uh, Ms. Hudson was very helpful to me uh, in uh, making sure I didn't spout off for, for 30 seconds or a minute before actually asking a question. Uh, so I'll know from now on to uh, be much more direct. Anyone else have any uh, observations on their hearings? I, I, oh, go ahead, uh, Nancy. I was going to say, uh, uh, I want to you know, uh, speak to the hearing examiner's role. I like the... Um, we had a, a hearing examiner um, react in a more, um, uh, I don't want to say, mm, authoritative way in guiding the hearing along. And um, I like that they uh, would consider questions and decide what was appropriate or not, uh, more so than I think one of the other sessions was a more um, open ended kind of hearing examiner. So I, I do pr prefer someone who's going to um, kind of, you know, guide um, us through our deliberations by being the one asking the questions and um, coming back and asking for clarifying questions, you know, from the board, if it wasn't quite clear what our words meant when we put them together. And uh, uh, that's, that's my observation. Thank you. 
And and I no oh, Jeff. No, go ahead, Bill, and I'll follow up. I was going to say I, I think I agree with that. Um, that um, that whatever the style, and I think the more authoritative style may be better for for this group. Uh, it was a very useful learning experience. Uh, not only did we learn about internal affairs files, but we learned about what we want to ask our hearing examiner to do for us. Yeah. And in that sense, you know, we've moved yet a step closer to, um, you know, to giving that person a, uh, a marching orders. Yes, Jeff. Um, a couple of observations. One, um, I agree with what you and Nancy said about the hearing officer. Uh, she was immensely helpful, and um, uh, I like that style better than our first go round. Secondly, it's imperative and essential that we have our outside counsel there. I mean, she she was the star of the show in terms of feeding us questions and keeping us kind of within the within the uh, rails. Um, and the, the, the third point is that um, it's, it's a lot more, um, we're going to have to do it a few times. There's still a learning curve involved. It's a lot more complicated and uh, detailed. You know, it's clear we have to do our homework with the materials before we go into it. Uh, it's, it it's clear that we, we have uh, our, uh, the questions uh, prior to the hearing from both the complainant and the CPD, which we didn't today, but when we found out, you know, how, um, how limiting it is when we don't have their questions beforehand. And there was one other point about the learning curve. Well, it flew out of my head. But anyway, it was very useful, I thought. And, um, <clears throat> oh, I know what the final point was. You know, it, it, a picture's worth a thousand words. I mean, it, 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 we really need to have the body cam footage. I mean. You know, I listened to the interviews, I took notes, but it was no, nothing of that was as compelling as watching 10 minutes of, of body cam footage. I mean, that's what really sealed it for me. So, um, you know, I think we're going to be, if we don't have that, we're going to be seriously handicapped. Our, our group got into a discussion about if it's a public hearing and it's being streamed, can we stream body cam footage? What are the privacy implications of that? Ms. Hudson's going to look into that for us, but, you know, there's still issues of privacy in terms of the, pers the officer's personnel file. There's issues of privacy in terms of the, the body cam footage. Um, obviously, the, the written reports wouldn't go out, but if that's out on the Internet, it could show up on, on um, Instagram. Uh, so anyway, those, those are just my ran random thoughts. Yeah, Bellamy? Uh, what, I mean, this is, I guess, really specific. Um, part of what Ms. Hudson was sharing us earlier is that normally on a typical situation she would do a lot of prep work to get us prepared for yeah. either questionings and things like that so i don't think we have the full benefit of her of her process um, right. so that'll you know obviously be helpful but yeah there are uh, you know a ton of issues that you know that come to bear especially uh, in this particular instance where you have uh you could say culpability on, on, on either side, um, and it makes it, um, you know, a, a challenge to look at. But also, um, as Ms. Hudson, you know, reminded us, is that there is, uh, I guess, for this particular review process, we are looking at, um, you know, policy violations in, in a sense. And so, how do we keep uh, the, the scope on? on that particular aspect uh, in, in line with um, what our, I guess, stated ability and power are. So, I mean, yeah, there's, yeah. Uh, Jeff. Um, yes. Did I hear you correctly uh, that you suggested we needed another round of mock hearings? No, 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 no. I, I, I did not suggest that. I just okay. said that as we get, as we get into them, we're going to continue to learn. And as we That's get into fine. them, okay. we're going to continue to work hearings. out the nuances, yeah. which is another argument for having a continuity of board members. Because, you know, we bring somebody new into this process. You know, if, if, if James, you know, leaves us, which I hope, 
hope and hope hope he doesn't. <laughs> um, um, you know, it, it, you know, it's taken me a while to get this far, and I've still got a ways to go. That's all I'm saying. And it's not a simple, straightforward process. It's a complicated, nuanced, multi-layered process. And I just want to make sure that when we think about continuity on the board, um, we factor that in. Okay, uh, James? <laughs> I would say, um, you know, uh, when I decided to, you know, join the join the group, like, like a lot of people, I just was really tired of seeing people uh, disrespected, mistreated by the police, purely wanted to help people. And then when you when you when you get in this role and you start learning, get all the education and you do the mock trial and everything else we've done the last couple of years, you're like, wow, there's there's a lot more to this, <laughs> a lot more to this than I thought. Yeah. Um, one of the things with that case that we we just uh, reviewed the other day is. Which I think was helpful is I actually thought the investigation was thorough and the report was thorough, but what the cop did was wrong. And that's kind of almost an oxymoron, but it's it's a way of thinking and perceiving, you know, what we're doing, what we're looking at that I didn't, when I first came to this, I couldn't maybe easily see that, you know, a police department can do an internal affairs investigation, get all the facts, have a video, and, uh, well, I guess I did know that, but then you're sitting there making a decision, and it's like, well, the fact of whether or not the they did a thorough investigation. That's not the problem here because they did. But that video shows, you know, that the, the officer jumped out of his car like a bull out of a stable and, and, and tased the man before fully assessing the situation. So yeah. 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 Uh, it's kind of one of those oxymorons where it's like they did their job on the IA side, but it was still what happened was wrong. And um, I was a choice two person <laughs> the four choices. You know, oh, and uh, I think um, I don't think I'm giving anything away by it, saying that the uh, one of the police CPD spokesmen said it was extremely hard to defend that yes. particular decision. Um, and he did his best, uh, but yeah. So, um, so I think we learned uh, a lot. Uh, I think we learned a lot about what we need to know about what we need to know. Uh, I think we learned a lot about what the um, we would like the internal affairs, excuse me, the uh, hearing examiner to do for us. Um, I think my impression is that this, assuming that all the moving parts can keep moving. I think this argues that it's entirely reasonable to actually have our hearing uh, on the 14th of July. As anybody, and I don't know, maybe Hansel, you're, you're, um, Hansel may want to speak to, you know, when we're going to uh, get a hearing examiner, actually. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be a right limiting step or uh, what's happening there. So, yeah. yeah. Lisa is um, in the process of uh, the city attorney, Lisa Robertson, is in the process of securing that. It really, she has, uh, we spoke several times, spoke this week. She has informed me that she can get one by July. So I wouldn't be concerned about that. What I would be concerned is, is about your level of comfort. And it, if, I mean, I would, you know, poll to, to see how you all feel, make sure that we're said because we have to make proper notifications to the complaints <coughs> the departments so there's different steps we have to take if you're not comfortable with that 14th date then you know this probably be the time to say so so we could start looking at different time frames but uh, once we start making those notifications uh it, it's it's going to be crucial that you try to to stay on board with yeah. that because people are making plans based on on these decisions that are being made Yeah, and I, you know, and I'm having a having a exa examiner by July doesn't doesn't comfort me a lot. It would be a lot more comfortable if we had one in June uh, that we could talk to. We have a little more time to talk to and meet with, uh, and who would have a little more time to prepare. 
So if you could ask her to expedite, I think that would be uh, very good. Right. I, uh, I understand your concern, but at the end of the day, that is going to be somebody that's well qualified for this, and it's within the purview of the city attorney. I think but what's most important is making sure that the board members are comfortable and set with their competencies to be able to hold the hearing because uh, this is somebody that's going to be a, a board attorney that's familiar with administrative processes. We will, the city attorney uh, would make sure that they're familiar with this interim procedure. So that's not necessarily a heavy lift per se, that the, the really the focus here for the board should be making sure that they're ready to be able to go through the process and be able to render a decision. Uh, Mr. Aguilar, or perhaps Ms. Hudson, would, would it be a conflict of interest for a member of your firm to serve that function, someone perhaps uh, that we just met today? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're yeah. um, with Sam Anderson having been engaged as your counsel, anybody in our firm is board counsel. Who, the, the, okay, the so so face so, of that engagement. So she's conflicted and, out. But but yeah, we we couldn't serve both roles. Gotcha. Okay, fair enough. Too bad. <laughs> yeah, and I and again, also you know, the um, interim guide, interim procedures, allow for a pre-hearing conference. Um, you know, which could take place right up until the day before. Yeah. There's no there's no schedule required at which time. The plaintiff and the hearing examiner and our counsel and our executive director could work out you know the procedures um and, you know and ask ask questions of each other so um so what I'm, what I'm hearing um from hansel is that he would like us to vote on whether we believe that we are ready uh on whether we should schedule a schedule a hearing for July 14th at 630. Mr. Uh, Chair, before we vote, could I just make one other comment? And it has to do sure. with the optics of, of kicking the can down the road again. I mean, we, we've been under some, I have felt we've been under some uh, public pressure to get this hearing done. It's been hanging out there for months. And I uh, just want everyone to sort of think about that piece of the, of the situation. Yeah, James? I don't know why I keep clicking my thing. Um, <laughs> my uh, my first thought is I don't like the, the, the can kicking reality, right? But, but also, if, if if it was said, hey, we're going to do one more training event, I wouldn't be opposed to that either necessarily. You know, I'm going to do my best as a citizen <laughs> uh, to, you know, uh, partake in a hearing, be unbiased, use my best judgment, all that. Um it is unique. It's a very unique, you know, process. But um, I wouldn't be opposed to another. But you know, I'm not gonna. I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm more over on the on the fence, leaning towards moving forward. I, I don't like to do things either, just because, right? There's, you know, we don't want to do something no. just because sure. of pressure. Because you you better off doing something right, right, than doing something just for the sake of doing it. Not just for the sake of doing it, but because you got pressures from outside forces. Because as, as Bellamy always talks about, not those outside forces aren't in the ring. Right? <laughs> They're not in the arena, whatever. We're in the arena, right? In somebody's career and somebody's well, on both ends, you know. You know, there's a lot weighing, well, arguably a lot, and and the whole state is technically watching us, right? Because we're the we we are the. I know there's Fairfax, but we're kind of the frontier on some of this too, so. Uh, so Nancy, don't, I, no need I'm to sorry. rush stuff either if we're not ready. Uh, Nancy, I think you were next. Yeah, I think uh, I'm ready. I think that July 14th, if we can get a hearing examiner that will uh, be experienced and that can also properly um, uh, lead us in the way that the uh, gentleman uh, was uh, doing through through the mock hearing, I, I think that um, that would have a lot better outcome because the person before was very at the mock hearing was very loosey goosey, and um, really didn't uh, 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 help us to uh, think of the um, type of question 
that uh, should be addressed to either um, the plaintiff or the or the defendant. So I think with with that kind of strong um, uh, hearing examiner, it, I think it would make uh, getting through a real hearing uh, a lot more um, <laughs> less scary. I guess is the word. I would, two two words. I'll say. I think that's a good way to put it, frankly. Um, uh, Hansel? Yeah, just one fact that I'd like for you to consider before you vote. You, you had less than ideal circumstances and situations. You didn't have much time to review the case file, and I acknowledge that. The sooner, if you're comfortable with that July 14th date, we could notice the hearing, and we can make sure that we're working with the police department. They, to that you have access to the case file, you have the city issue computers, so you have access to SharePoint and you have a, a lot more time than, than the three days or less than three days that you had to review the case file. So you will have a lot of run throughs before here in July to be looking at the case file holistically and access to your legal counsel and to me if you have any questions and about how to formulate any questions. Yeah, and I again I point out that a lot of the training materials are right right on point you know if you see something and uh with regard to what i believe is going to be in this uh in this file uh, yeah <laughs> again james is there your hand really up yeah yeah but it's a real hand let me and it'd probably be one of my last ones but uh who, who did y'all use in fairfax i mean maybe was it the gentleman that came before or uh who was you know who was your hearing examiner? We didn't or have a group? hearing examiner, so our process oh. was different. We deliberated um, as if it was a regular board meeting, but in our chair, I guess, facilitated the process, but without the hearing examiner. Um, could be challenging. You guys had a lot of lawyers and people with professional background, prior law yeah. experience and all that, but it just seems like it also seems like a waste of a board member because wouldn't they want to vote on it? Right? Like, wouldn't that one person that's the chair be a kind of vote on, I don't know, weigh in on the case? Uh, interesting. They did get to weigh in on the case. It was just a different setup where we didn't really introduce evidence, so we didn't have that uh, element of our process. It really, we called it a meeting and we invited the police department to make a presentation, the complainant to make a presentation. And then based on that information, we deliberated, but it, we didn't have the different uh, elements that you guys have in your process. So a little bit different. Yeah, I don't wanna complicate uh, things um, any more than is necessary. But again, if we do notice the hearing um, soon, within the next couple of days, um, it, it appears to me that we could have a special meeting uh, sometime before the 14th at which we could ask questions, general questions, you know, non FOIA type questions, uh, questions regarding uh, the uh, general principles involved and not the specifics of the case if, if that would make people feel more comfortable. Uh, we could tentatively schedule that if we don't think we need it. We don't have to have it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't think you need it, you don't have to come. Uh, and so uh, that might be, uh, you know, might be one thing to, for us to uh, consider. So uh, can I uh, have a motion to schedule a hearing on July 14th? So move. That's uh, he can't make the second. Uh, that was no motion. Um, do you, uh, I don't You're believe the chair is allowed to make a motion, so there was no motion. No, I said I will entertain a motion. I said so move, Mr. Brown. Oh, my apologies. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> are you uh, are you seconding? Uh, I didn't, uh, I don't know. I kind of feel like the, like another, um, I don't know, like another practice would be uh, would be beneficial. Um, but um, that being said, sure, I'll second. <laughs> Mr. Aguilar, Member Brown, no. 
Member Carpenter? Yes. Member Frazier? Yes. Chair Mendez? Yes. Vice Chair Watson? Yes. Okay, now um, uh, can we explore availability for a special meeting between now and then? Um, if two weeks might be a little early, uh, Council, you gotta. Uh, if I may, I'm just, I'm not sure that I quite understood what the purpose of this special meeting was. And I, I don't, if I, the way I understood it, it I would probably get some legal counsel at, and, and explain what exactly your this pre-meeting will be because it sounds like you may be wanting to have a pre-hearing and I'm, I, I'm, I'm just want to make sure I understood the purpose of this particular meeting and I think it, it, you, may, you don't want to um, cross over into a scenario where you're having an, an actual hearing prior to the hearing. So. You know, I understand that, but uh, essentially, uh, I don't have this. This I should pull up the the guide, the uh, interim operating procedures. Uh, but. Uh, and, and I'm not sure whether our council has this available, but basically what it says is we can have uh, the board may have a pre-hearing conference uh, to address issues associated with the order of proceedings, essentially. Okay. Um, and there's nothing, uh, nothing else that specifies that we have to, uh, when it could be. Um, but I think it would be, I think it would be very useful to have it. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, if it's in, in accordance with those interim procedures, that's fine. I just didn't understand it that way when you initially presented it. Yeah, I'm, so I don't know, Cynthia, whether I'm still looking for, for the, uh, for, for the, the provision. We, we actually talked about that provision in the mock exercise that immediately preceded this this meeting. So it, um, in fact, Pam, who was acting as the hearing examiner, um, recited that provision. So it's definitely there. And if you know, if it's the will of the the, the board to do that, we can, can certainly do that. I, I think we should decide exactly what we understand a pre-hearing conference to to encompass. It, it says there are preliminary matters related to the hearing, which. It, it, it could be matters uh, regarding what the board would like to see happen in terms of pre-prepared questions from each side um, to, to make the questioning process easier uh, and, and set deadlines for when the board wants to maybe receive those kinds of things in advance. It could be, you know, um, stimulating thought about any pre-hearing motions, but, um, Again, to, to have a better idea of what it is we're trying to accomplish with the pre-hearing conference is going to be helpful. But it's definitely, obviously, provided for. Yeah, and I um, and I am not sure that we could get away with requiring people to ask questions in advance since they had no, no, the statements. Uh, and I wouldn't suggest that they be limited to the questions that they ask in advance. But I think one of the things that characterized each of the mock exercises was that the, the, this, this ability and, and inclination to immediately um, develop questions in real time, uh, so much of what was asked in the meetings, in, in the hearings, if you review the materials and had time to review them, those questions would have suggested themselves even beforehand. But that doesn't mean that those would be the only questions that would be asked during the hearing. There would also be those that would be prompted by the testimony that was heard live too. So I'm just, and I, and I just threw that out as an example of what you might try to address. Think, um, it's not that you I necessarily have to. I make a suggestion that our uh, that our council um, 
make recommendation formal recommendations as legal advice as to the scope of a pre-hearing conference i'm glad to do that mr chair <laughs> yes excuse me would would um the thursday before that uh, first thursday in july would that be cutting it too close it's yeah it might be okay <clears throat> also you have to understand that we can um you know any two of you uh or or i believe myself can call a special um a special meeting um if we believe it's needed and so i can if i receive uh feedback from individuals <sighs> suggesting that they want to have a meeting uh we can do it that way okay we don't need to commit right now Okay, so we have um, agreed to dive into the cold water on June 14th, head for, July 14th, 14th. Head first, uh, to notice, uh, yes, uh, Cynthia. I was just going to ask, with respect to the, the, the vote that was just taken, of, you know, setting that hearing date for July 14th, which would be your regular monthly meeting date and time, yes. and, and I, I'm, I'm not familiar yet with the scope and nature of the hearing of, of the underlying fact pattern is beginning at 6 30 going to be reasonable for the presentation and conclusion of this or was there any consideration to starting the meeting earlier to accommodate the time? again i'm asking this not knowing how extensive the fact yeah, pattern is. yeah no i understand i think we're I think we're hoping that 6.30 is a good time. Okay. Um, there would be nothing else on the agenda. Um, you know, if, 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 you know, if we go late at night, we, we go late at night. Um, we, you know, here in Charlottesville, we're really tough. You know, we can, <laughs> we're used to meetings that go forever. Yeah, James. Well, <clears throat> it may not be a bad idea to, out the second meeting date just in case something goes something happens and we can't have this date because we're we're saying we're still trying to get a hearing examiner locked down right and then 14 well, january I, I, you know I, i'm thinking we you know we have the we have the word of the city attorney that we will have a hearing on that date and and i and i will you know directly after this meeting tell you know write an email to the city manager explaining that they are on the critical path for this hearing. I think unless I unless I miss my guess and Hansel, you know, may know better than I, Lisa is likely tapping a list of administrative hearing officers that's maintained by the executive secretary of the Supreme Court. And if, if she's doing that, you're going to have a hearing examiner. Um, no question about that. I mean, for the and in a timely fashion. So I, I expect you won't have that to worry about, but a, a, a rain date, though, um, Mr. Watson, I absolutely understand. That's that, like, that vacation time of year, people getting corona. I've, man, I've dealt with my kids. I, I, I got my son dressed for school the other day, got him halfway out the door, and his school year ended three days early because there were so many kids that got corona in the classroom. So i'm like oh sorry i guess we're not going but i mean it's you know it, it never hurts to have a, a, a backup date penciled in doesn't mean you have to have it that day but so then we can get our you know plug our calendars plug something in there that's just my thought mm -hmm. yeah well at least and again our our procedures allow us for for continuations um, so, and it's pretty vague about what the uh, required conditions for a continuation are, and in fact, it doesn't place doesn't seem to place any um, limit on uh, our discretion. Uh, so, if there's a hurricane or a COVID or something, um, you know, we'll have to have a continuation and, or a postponement. Uh, we don't have any we just need a, a quorum right so if everybody at the at the quorum. actual meeting yeah just a yeah. quorum yeah. four four people four voting members yeah 
Yep. Okay. Um, see where we're at here. Uh, so I think that I, I'd like to thank you all for stepping up and uh, agreeing to have the hearing. Um, reiterate, you know, that we've got plenty of time to finish up with the training. Um, and uh, I guess, uh, I don't know if anyone else has any more comments. Mr. Executive Director, do you have any more uh, in your report or you, is that it? I believe we covered all the points. Um, it was listed schedule and I'm assuming you were referring to the schedule of the hearing or? Yeah. Okay. So I, I believe yeah. all the points have been covered under that section. Okay. All right. So the next uh, item is our annual report draft. And you remember that I swore uh, a blood oath last time to have a copy <laughs> for you this time. Uh, I almost made it. Um, I have a revised document and shared it with Hansel and James. Uh, since there is a section on uh, patterns in uh, allegations and outcomes of, which were pulled off of the internal affairs ports. Um, I wanna make sure that I haven't distorted anything. And so I'm running those numbers, also running those numbers by internal affairs and we'll resolve any issues that we have. Uh, and then uh, that should happen very quickly. <laughs> and honest, that should happen very quickly, and, and then we can share the whole document uh, around between us. Uh, you know, there's a section at the end called, um, you know, considerations uh, for the city council. I've taken a first cut at that. Things that concern me, uh, and uh, certainly. Um, you know, ask for additional comments uh, in that in that uh, in that section. Any other questions, comments? All right, then we have another uh, public comments section scheduled. Mr. Aguilar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you'd like to speak to the Police of Illinois Oversight Board please click the raise hand icon in the Zoom webinar. If you're joining us via telephone, press star nine. Each speaker will be allowed up to three minutes. Please share your place of residence when you begin. see any any hands up um, but nonetheless thank you uh, attendees for for coming um, I guess the I guess the next order of business is for me to ask for a motion to adjourn is this for uh, you say so mood Jeff <laughs> uh, I'm so gonna say Okay. Second. Second. Mr. Aguilar. Member Brown. Yes. Member Carpenter. Yes. Member Fraser. Yes. Chair Mendez. Yes. Vice Chair Watson. Yes. Okay. Yes. The meeting is adjourned. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. For Thank you. Have a good so, night. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care.